Hi, this is PD at Berserk Arcade at BerserkArcade.com, and this is tutorial 243 part uh, Q. Uh, well, we're going to move on to the mob spawner, but I figured before we actually get to the point where we're actually trying to spawn mobs, we really should create some mobs to spawn. So in this one here, we're actually going to set up uh, at least one mob to, to spawn. So I've gone ahead and included the Pro Games Proto Pack. I'll put a link down in the little doobly-doo below. Uh, it's a great package. I think everyone really should invest in something along these lines. And Pro Games does offer it for uh, 20 bucks. You can go check it out on their website. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and add a character to my scene. Uh, let's make sure I'm in the tutorial scene. I am. Uh, let's go ahead and move to my spawn points. Just so I know exactly where I roughly am. I'm just going to drag character onto the scene. Zoom in. Now it looks like he's probably actually kind of small for my game, but I can go ahead and rescale him. That's uh, like a Unity thing. You should be familiar with that. Uh, all I really have to do is select my character, come up, uh, go to Components, Hack and Slash Tutorial, uh, Mob, Add Mob Scripts. It tells me that I'm losing my prefab. That's fine. And I'm actually going to shrink this up too. And here we go. It adds everything. I know the first thing you're going to notice it. You know, the mob script looks quite a bit like our uh, PC script, except we have a current health and max health, which I don't actually think we're using anymore. Let me go take a look here. Uh, here they are. Yep, we're not even actually using these anymore. We used to use it to uh, send out a message, uh, but it looks like we're actually going to be working that really soon, probably in the next wave of tutorials for our mob. And we're giving it a default name of slug. Uh, there's going to be quite a bit of redone here, so I'm not going to dwell too much on what the code that's actually here, since we're going to actually be redoing it all. So I'm going to go ahead and just actually just leave that the way it is. I'm going to head back into Unity, and uh, I do want to have the weapon mounts and all these other different mounts because you know you, you might want to have weapons or mobs that you know have different type of weapons. So maybe you have certain mobs that carry you know like a club, and another one carries a sword and whatnot. So I do want to keep access to these here. Now, of course, you're going to have to set your mobs up similar to the way that we actually set our, our player up. But the great thing is it doesn't really need to have the same skeletal structure. Uh, it can be, you can buy these uh, from any other you know, vendor or create them yourself. And you not really worry about how the player is constructed. Uh, simply because we're just creating mount points for these. So that's pretty much it um, for that one. Let's shrink that down. Uh, mob AI, uh, Perception Radius. And base melee range. Now, the base melee range is basically how close they can be to you uh, before they land a melee attack. And your perception radius is basically how close uh, you have to be to that mob before they notice you. And it's going to be a big sphere. If we uh, actually start expanding this, I'm not seeing it. I might actually have to start running it before we actually see it. But you can see the little sphere in here. That's his. Uh, I'm sorry, this is actually just affecting the base value. You'd actually have to come up to the sphere collider right here. Like these values, the perception radius will uh, affect this here. So it's going to put it to 10. So that's his perception range. You come within range, or once you collide with this, then he wakes up. But it automatically adjusts, and it's um, adjustable per mob or at least per mob type if you'd like, uh, wherever you want to set it up. I'm just going to keep it at one for now just to keep things small and in screen. Uh, the base melee range we went over. Uh, advanced movement, you're going to have to come and set up uh, some of the animations for them. And I'll do that off camera. We've already done that with our player character script. Uh, so just go ahead, or when we're creating our player character prefab, just go ahead and watch that one if you're not sure uh, how to do it. Uh, here, I'll do one real quick. Uh, let me shrink it down. Uh, we'll do the walk one. So I'm just going to come up to animation. I actually don't have any animations attached to this yet. So I'm actually going to have to go ahead and find these animations and attach them. Hmm. Okay, well, anyway, let's go find them. Because this might occur for other people. So here we are. Uh, I just want to kind of click one of these to bring me to the animation. I'm going to have to extend this just a bit so I can see them. Uh, here we go open this up here's my walk script select my mob that I'm making here which happens to be called character 2 uh, I can increase the size of this to 1 and just drag it on here uh, let's try that again
uh, here we go. Uh, there's two different types of walk I have. Well, the, all these walks here, if you look, they're available to our player character. And here's the one that's available to our Fro Games one. And there's also the zombie walk, which is a different walk. You might want to use that one as well. And if we click on it, there it is down here. I'm not sure why I can't get that there, because I know I can do it this way. Uh, Unity just might be acting up on me today. Let me see. So right there. Yeah. For some reason, I can't drag and drop it today. But anyway, uh, that's how you do it. I'm probably going to need some others like Run. Uh, I'm not sure exactly which ones I'll need ex uh, completely. But um, later on, I will be switching this over to taking the animation clips themselves. So we won't even have to worry about adding them on up here. We can just drag them on down here. Uh, but for now, we're just referring to the string name of the animations up here. But anyway, we're going to go through and add the ones that we have for it here. Uh, sphere Collider, you don't actually have to do anything here. You might have to click Is Trigger. I'm not going to because I don't think we have to. I'm pretty sure our AI script does that for us. And then the animation. So let's go ahead and start this up. See what errors we get. Uh, what about the animation not being available? So let's go see what animation it needs. It needs an anal idle animation. And I know these are going to be on my mob because that's just what I finished adding. And advanced movement. So I need an idle. So let me click my mob here. Uh, go down here. Better yet, let's just find idle. Uh, it's easier the other way. And we'll look for idle. Yeah, we'll look for the one that's attached to our fro game. There's idle up. Now the fro game models are made a little bit differently. They're made to uh, use blended animations. Uh, I'm just gonna actually just pick this one here and put that name in down here. So it's up underscore I D L E. And I'm gonna hit clear. Start again. And there we go. Let's go over and take a look at our mob. I'll pause the game. It looks like he fell through the uh, ground. And it doesn't look like anything adjusted. And I'm pretty sure I thought I had it set up to adjust. That's fine. Let's unpause it. I'm going to go back to my character in the scene view. Or I guess our mob. And start pause right away. I just want to see if the uh, trigger is being set for us on the collider. Okay, it actually apparently we have an error here. And if we scroll up and just double click the error, we'll come back to our AI script and we'll notice that it's looking for a home. And it's trying to get its transform parent value. And I believe I mentioned in the last video that all mobs are meant to spawn under a spawn point. And they can move around as much as they want. Uh, but uh, they have to have some sort of spawn point that they're tied to. So if we ever have to reset them or something like that, it knows where to go. And for some reason, my drag and drop is not working too. There we go. For some reason, I had to expand it. Uh, but it was not working too well. I'm going to go ahead and reset the position. And I'm going to go look at it now in our scene view. So here we are. He's all up inside that spawn point. And let's go ahead and hit start or play. And... Let's go find them. Uh, we did not get any errors. We did get a couple warnings. Um, uh, I have to add my 3D text mesh to our character, or to my mob. That was for the floating name above his head. And we do not have a target for the camera script. Uh, that's for the camera script when it first starts up. It takes a look uh, to find the, the player. And if it can't find it, then it uh, well, basically waits. It doesn't do anything. Uh, and then it checks in later on. But anyway, if we look at the mob here, he's actually fallen to the ground. And what I want to look at is to see what was set and what wasn't set. So if we take a look here, uh, his perception range is set. Uh, the radius is set. It's automatically set to is trigger. Uh, so it appears that's all we needed for our animations was, uh, well, at least idle up and probably walk. I'm pretty sure I need walk as a, a default. 
and the character controller is not set by default and that's something I actually want to change in script uh, basically have the character controller automatically sized to our mobs instead of always having to go in and size them it, ourselves but it's not that bad you go ahead look at the height you generally just have to go half the height which is one and then just play around with the radius so we'll zoom in a bit and uh, well that radius is too big uh, it's too small I usually like it about uh, out just to the shoulders uh, that's it so I'm gonna stop that I'm actually gonna take the character uh, make those adjustments that I just made and let's actually go find the character so we can take a look because I didn't actually remember what I saved uh, the radius was probably about 0.3 that's what I'm gonna save it as but I'm gonna go ahead and take this character and make a prefab for it clear the search uh, I'm just gonna come down to my resources I'm just gonna throw it here and yeah I'm gonna put it under prefabs for now the path does not matter for now. I uh, do not want to create a new G JavaScript. I will create a new folder. And I'm going to call this just mobs. I'll probably want to get a little more detailed a little bit later on. We have done, done a whole lot with mobs. We've got the basic AI working. And that's pretty much it. So it's, it's something we really need to start digging into. So I'm going to go ahead and create a prefab in here. And I'm just going to call this skeleton. And of course, I'll just go ahead and drag and drop that in. And we can delete that from our spawn point. And uh, let's reconnect this spawn point. And anyway, that's it. We've got our first mob created. Uh, in our next tutorial, we're going to go ahead and hook up our little mob generator uh, so that we can spawn uh, mobs underneath our uh, spawn points. We might have to do a little tweaking on the skeleton, but uh, if we do, we'll just do it then. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.